Lecture 27 covers sections 4.4 through 4.5. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to apply the conservation of energy and the conservation mass to open and closed heat exchange systems. To begin, a heat exchanger is a device that transfers heat from a high temperature reservoir to a low temperature reservoir. In the picture below, we have a shell and tube heat exchanger. On the left side of the image, we have the tubes. We see there is a manifold that directs flow through each of the tubes. On the right hand side of the image we have a shell where fluid enters and runs over the tubes. The heat exchange occurs at the surface of the tubes between the two working fluids. We see the working fluids do not mix, rather we are able to transfer energy save from heat within the fluid within the tubes to the fluid contained within the shell. Now to analyze how heat exchangers work, let's look at a simple example. Let's consider a crossflow heat exchanger as shown in the figure below. In the figure below, we have one tube up top where M.1 enters and M.2 exits. This is a single tube. This is in contact with another tube where we have M.3 entering and M.4 exiting. These two tubes are separated by a physical wall. The heat exchange process can occur between these tubes. Now let's say steam enters state one at 10 kPa in a quality of 95% and it exits at state two as a liquid with a temperature at 45 degrees centigrade. Now cooling water enters at state three as a liquid at 20 degrees centigrade and exits at state four as a liquid at 35 degrees centigrade. We want to determine the ratio of mass flow rate of our cooling water to condensing steam, that is m.3 per m.1, and the rate of energy transfer from the condensing steam to the cooling water. To begin, we draw our control surface over the entire heat exchange system, such that we have M.1 and M.3 entering our control volume, and M.2 and M.4 exiting our control volume. To begin, we are going to list our state variables. State 1 was our steam entering at 10 kPa in a quality of 95%. At state 2, we had liquid exiting at a temperature of 45 degrees centigrade. The pressure between state 1 and state 2 remains the same, for a heat exchange system operates under constant pressure. At state 3, we have liquid water entering at 20 degrees centigrade, and at state 4, we have liquid water exiting at 35 degrees centigrade. The pressures between state 3 and state 4 remain the same. For us to analyze the system, we want to apply our conservation of energy to the entirety of our heat exchange system. To do such, we recognize that the time rate of change of energy is equal to zero. This is equal to the heat supplied to our control volume, less the work done by our control volume. This is plus the sum of our mass flows into our system times the respective enthalpies, kinetic energies, and potential energies, less the sum of our mass flows out of our system times the respective enthalpies, kinetic energies, and potential energies, such that we have M.1 and M.3 entering our control volume each carrying an enthalpy, a velocity, and a change of elevation. And we have M.2 and M.4 exiting our control volume, each carrying an enthalpy, a velocity, and an elevation. Now, we are going to assume that there is no work, which is a very important assumption. A heat exchanger should not be doing work. There is no heat transfer between our heat exchange system and the surroundings. Rather, we are transferring energy from the top tube to the bottom tube and we can neglect kinetic and potential energies. If we call M.1 is equal to M.2, which is equal to the mass flow rate of our condensing steam, and M.3 being M.4 equal to the mass flow rate of our cooling water, we have zero is equal to the mass flow rate of our condensing steam times the quantity H1 less H2, plus the mass flow rate of our cooling water times H3 less H4. Or we can solve for our mass flow rate of our cooling water to that of our condensing steam given as H1 less H2 per H4 plus H3. Now all we have to do is determine our enthalpies at state one and state two. To do such, we know our pressure and our quality at state one. Thus our enthalpy at state one is found from our saturated liquid specific enthalpy plus our quality at state one times the difference of our saturated vapor saturated liquid specific enthalpy. And our enthalpy at state one is found to be 2,464.989 kilojoule per kg. At state two, we're assuming our fluid is exiting as a compressed liquid based upon the temperature and pressure. Thus our enthalpy at state two is equal to our saturated liquid specific enthalpy evaluated at T2. Or we have a value of 188.42 kilojoule per kg. 
State 3 and State 4 are both assumed to be liquid, and thus we can take their saturated liquid specific enthalpies as a function of temperature. Our enthalpy at state 3 is 83.94 kJ per kg, and our enthalpy at state 4 is 146.66 kJ per kg. Thus, if we substitute in the values for enthalpies, our mass flow rate of our cooling water to our condensing steam is 36.3. Now, to determine the rate of energy transfer from the condensing steam to cooling water, we have to change our control surface. We define our control surface merely being over our first tube that's carrying the condensing steam. Thus, we have Q leaving our control volume. That is, we have heat leaving our condensing steam being picked up by the cooling water, as shown to the schematic to the left. Now, all we have to do is apply our conservation of energy to our modified control volume. That is, we have mass flow in and out of our system represented by m.1 and m.2. Thus, we can express our conservation of energy for a modified control volume. We have the time rate of change of energy is equal to zero. This is equal to our heat supplied, less our work done, plus our mass flow rate into our control volume, carrying enthalpy, kinetic, and potential energy, plus our mass flow rate exiting our control volume, carrying an enthalpy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. If we neglect work, which is a very important assumption, as well as changes of kinetic and potential energies, we have our heat rejected is equal to the mass flow rate of our condensing steam, m dot condense, times the difference of enthalpies, H2 less H1. Now if we do this on a per mass basis, our heat rejected per our mass flow rate is merely the difference of our enthalpies, or we're rejecting 2276.569 kilojoule per kg.